All right, so now the last part of this project, I've got to decide how I want to display that loan detail information, okay? So the, the actual part, the good part of this whole project, right? So here it says update loan. I'm just gonna close all of these and start kind of with a blank slate, okay? And if you look at my files that need to be committed, I still have three files out here that need to be updated, but I'm not gonna send them out yet because I'm gonna do another, I'm gonna create it. So I want to create a new blueprint, okay? Um, and I'm gonna just gonna copy the one from loan amortization and I'm gonna paste it here and I'm gonna call it loan amortization detail. Okay, I'm just gonna click okay. And here, I don't need to mess with anything up here, but here I'm going to add detail on the end. Okay, and again, this needs to stay the same and I'm going to put the detail in there and I'm not gonna do any update or delete, so I'm gonna delete both of those routes. And this is just gonna be for my loan amortization detail. So it's going to be loan detail, make sure I spell it right, and loan detail, okay? And what I want to do is I want to pass in the ID of the loan that was clicked into this loan detail. And then from here, use that information. So go out to the database, grab the loan detail from the ID. And um, so grab all that information and run it through the function that we wrote, the for loop, and return out all the detail, the loan detail from that. So what we can do is copy, actually, I think what I'll do is I'll just get rid of this if, because we're not gonna grab anything from them, we're just gonna show it, okay? And we, so we don't need any of this post methods. All right, so we can get rid of that. All right, and now we can put into the database all the stuff that we need next all right so I'm gonna I'm actually going to render template loan detail loan detail and we're gonna send in loan detail um, and loan detail and we are going to not need to do any of that. All right. Um, we want to come down and we want to create our function, but I think we'll put our function right here. Okay. And we will say, um, create a function that calculates the loan amortization details. And so we'll go through and look, okay? So let's just see what it says. It says loan amortization, so it defines another function. It has principal, interest rate, and loan term. Calculate, and I don't think we called it principal, I think we called it loan amount, okay? But it calculates the monthly interest rate, which it does. Then it calculates the payment, which is perfect. It does the, puts it in a list. Okay, that's a data type. And it does the four, okay, does all of that. And it returns the list, loan amortization list. Huh, that's perfect. So I'm gonna hit tab. And the one thing I don't like about it is I don't like that it uses principal, but that's okay. We'll talk about that in a second, that's okay. I would, I, we called it uh, loan amount but that's okay, principle's fine. So down here, I'm gonna copy this whole code and I'm gonna go back into chat because I want it to be um, succinct, right? So I want it to go in and, so I'm gonna say adjust this code um, for any slight errors. Um, I want the principle to be called uh, loan amount. 
So I'm gonna put that in and it's actually gonna fix. So the part that I did at the very, very bottom wasn't 100% accurate yet, okay? So we'll look and see. All right, so here's the updated loan amortization detail page, okay? So here it says loan detail, loan detail, okay? And then it sends it in, it changed it to loan amount like I wanted. And then it does the interest rate and calculate the monthly payment. And if the interest rate is greater than zero, oh, so it actually added a little bit of little bit of error checking in there, which is nice. And then in the list, up in the details, and then down here, loan amount. It gets the amount, the interest, and the loan terms. And then right here it says send it back out, get the amortization details, and it sends it back out to loan detail, and it sends in the schedule to the amortization schedule. Um, and then it says, if get, show the loan form. All right, so I don't want the loan form, okay? Instead, I wanna get the information from the loan, um, from, the, from the actual button click, right? The button click. So let's go back into our loan amortization, the regular one, okay? So under loans, and I'm gonna copy that for loans, and I'm gonna come back into chat, and I'm just gonna ask it to add a button for details. Add a button for, um, add a blue button that will allow each loan to be um, calculated for loan details. And I'm just gonna paste all the code for that right in, so it'll add, it will add the right button. And it's probably gonna wanna, it's gonna probably try to adjust the loan amortization pie file too, um, but we'll work on that in just a second and, and, and force it to how we want. So here um, is where is where we're going to see the button down here in this all the loans. So it should be right next to it. So calculate detail button. Okay. So it says go to loan amortization detail loan detail. So it actually sends it actually is going to the right place. Okay. And over here it's sending in the loan info ID, which is what we need. Okay. So this code is perfect. I'm going to click copy the code, and I'm going to go back to my pie charm. And inside my um, loans HTML, this is the one I just copied. I'm just going to copy the whole thing and paste it right in. Okay, so I just replaced all of that right there. And if I come over here and hit refresh, it's going to say, I don't know where this is. Okay, so let's look and see with values. Did you mean, oh, I need to make sure that I include that. So if I go back to my pie charm and come to here, I can't just try to send it in without the actual thing. So um, I'm gonna copy this code, okay? And I'm going to go back to my chat and say, um, instead of getting from a form, um, adjust this code to allow for the loan ID to be passed in from the loan.py, something like that. And I'm just gonna paste in the code here. And it's gonna know, now that it knows both files, it's gonna fix this one and, and get rid of all the stuff at the bottom that was trying to get it from the loan. So notice here, and I'm just gonna, if I scroll up, it will stop auto scrolling down. Yeah, so it's working down here. But right here, instead of just loan detail, it's actually passing in that integer loan info ID and, and it's passing it in here. Then it's gonna use the whole thing. It's gonna use that loan ID to execute the database, get the loan amount interest rate in terms from the loan based off that loan ID. Kind of a nice way to do it. I could pass all that in. I have it available on the other page, but I kind of like just passing in the loan ID makes it a little bit easier, plus it can make that call pretty fast. And then it's gonna go through and do the same calculation as before, because I gave it to it. And instead of doing the form, 
So instead of doing the form, it just finished it at the bottom. Okay, so it didn't have to go and have, a, have that form anywhere. So I'm going to copy all of that code and put all of that code, which I know is now right, into my loan amortization detail pie file. Okay, so before it had this, all this form stuff down here that I didn't need. So I'm just going to copy, select all. I'm going to paste it right in here. Okay, and now it goes out and it grabs all the right, the right ones. So I'm going to hit the back button here and I'm going to go to loan and it's still, let's see, with values. All right, so loan amortization detail with values, loan info ID. And I might be trying to call it without passing in something. So loans, all loans. All right, so if I start here and I go up to about here and just copy it, I'm just gonna put that all that error message in and it should just auto fix the, one of the issues is sometimes it, it, it it's calling something wrong, okay? So I'm just gonna paste it in here and it will tell it. It will probably, oh, sorry about that. The error in, in, you're encountering and it will tell. This usually means either the blueprint isn't registered properly or there is a mismatch. Okay, so let's go back again and fix that. So it told me, I just pasted it in and instead of me trying to figure all this out, I just, I pasted it right into chat. And of course, the one thing that I forgot to do is we have three blueprints, but if we look at the INIT file, we only have two blueprints registered, okay? So I hit enter. And it auto puts in there and I hit enter and it auto registers there. <laughs> right. So let's go back and go to loan. And this is here. And if I calculate the details, we get an error. Okay. Unsupported operand type string. But that doesn't tell me a whole lot. Okay. And if I come down here, it tells me more. So if I start the, the copy down here, if I click this, um, it will tell me even more stuff, right? But if I start here and copy up, up a ways and just copy, I can go right in and paste it right here and it will adjust the code. So somewhere it's trying to take a, a string which is that a data type and it's trying to divide it by an integer and it's not letting it do it. So down here, it's going to adjust the code. It's doing, it's going to do. So most likely right here, it's adjusting it, um, convert the fetch data to the appropriate types. Okay. So if I look at the code here and go to details here, it did not ever do that. So I'm getting my data in here, my select statement, and it never adjusted for that. So if we come back over to our chat code, it's going to adjust. Okay. And the good thing is if I, if I paste the code in also, it will, it will give me back the same code and not try to go back to a different version. So I'm looking, everything looks good. I'm going to copy that code. And I'm going to come into my loan details pie and I'm just going to paste it in. Okay. So it adjusted by putting this here, like we were doing in class, it will adjust that, um, and put it and put it in to make sure it's right when it's comes out of that. All right. So now I'm going to come back over. I'm going to come back. I'm going to refresh the page. Okay. Calculate the details. All right. And it says key error zero. Okay. Well, let's go back and we'll figure out how to fix that next one. Okay. So key error zero, come up here, copy that. And we'll paste that in. All right. And so you, if you look at the error, it actually says, Hey, you're trying to do a, uh, you're trying to look for something that's not there. Okay. So, which isn't necessarily the case. So we need to figure out why that is. I'm going to copy the code that I just put in. It's adjusting the code just a little bit. So we're going to paste it into our PyCharm and see if that might, it does a little bit of error checking. Okay. 
So it adds a little error checking. I'm going to come over here and see if that fixes it. Okay. Click on details and it does not. It, it's the, the problem is, um, it's converting the loan amount to a float. I think it's in the wrong order. So let me troubleshoot this and we'll get you the right code. All right, one of the things we didn't talk about is data types. We haven't talked about that yet too much, but we'll talk about that a little bit in, in a little bit more soon. Um, right here, it's assuming we're getting this back as a list. And that's what's, that's what's causing the error. If you look at your DB Connect, it always tells it to return it as a dictionary. Okay, return the cursor as a dictionary. So we need to tell chat that this, the data coming back is not in a list. It's coming back in a dictionary. Okay. So let's go back out to our chat and say the data coming from SQL is a dictionary, not a list. And it should adjust that code needs to adjust adjust the code accordingly and bring it back as a dictionary so it should actually list um <laughs> it's trying to say to do it as let's just double check example using my S compatible library adjust in dictionary output well we don't want it to, we do we want it to come back as a dictionary but here notice instead of a zero a one and a two it just brings it back and it and it brings it back as a dictionary. Okay. So to troubleshoot this, um, I simply put in after it was, it was causing some errors. So I simply just said, print out the loan data. Okay. So here's the loan data and it got it. I knew it was working. It was throwing a key error. So I knew it was working and notice it says zero, one, and two right here. So I printed out the loan data. And it's still through all these errors. The key error is still here. But if I go up higher, so I'm going to come up here, and you can tell where it started, right? It started, here's it started. And then if I come down, I can see my loan data actually printed out in the terminal. Even though I'm running this from um, the web, it's still going to print out in the terminal, okay? So I copied this, copied that line, and I went into ChatGPT and I said, here's my, my loan amount or my loan data output. And it said, oh, the problem is that's a dictionary, not a list. And a dictionary has the description of what the data type is. So it says loan amount, interest rate, term. A list just says, um, it just has this comma, this comma, this. It doesn't actually turn into a dictionary. A dictionary is much nicer. Okay. So we want to copy the code. Okay. And we want to replace this with dictionary code. Okay. So now I don't need to print this out anymore. I'm just going to comment that out. Okay. I don't, we don't need to print out the data. Okay. But when I go back, we're running this locally. I'm going to refresh the page a couple times and I calculate the details. Now it says, hey, I don't know. There's no template found. Okay. Which is good. So we're, we're on the right track. Okay. So now I can come in and make sure that I have an actual loan detail, which I don't think I actually ever made, but we're on the right track. So I'm going to come over here and I call it under my templates. Nothing. I don't have one here yet, right? So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to copy this and I'm going to paste it in and I'm going to call it loan detail. And I'm going to copy all of that code right back into my chat that I've been using. So it knows I'm going to say rewrite this for the loan detail HTML page. And it's going to just rewrite it for that loan detail HTML page. And it's going to grab it all in. And it even brings in the loan ID, which is nice. And it brings all this information, which is nice. And it knows, and it knows all of the um, 
for the for statement. So right here, loan schedule is what the variable that we sent in is, and it's calling it payment, and it brings it all in. Okay, so I'm gonna copy that code. I'm gonna come back to my PyCharm in my loan detail. I'm gonna paste it in. So make sure I'm in loan detail. Copy, paste it in. And now when I go back to it, I hit refresh a couple times, hit calculate details. Here's my loan amortization and it works. And notice my starting balance is going down, 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 down over the whole term of the, that it's going through. And it finishes with your last payment. Okay. Um, if I go back, I can add another one. So let's just add another one. Let's go um, 250000 And let's call it a 20-year loan at, um, let's call it 8%. 8.5. 1, 2%. Click Add Loan. And look at those details here. And it starts at 250 Monthly payment. Now, there's a lot of really cool stuff we can do from here, but this is just a basic loan amortization, like a mortgage rate calculator. Click on loans, and um, we did some crazy troubleshooting today, and we are now able to store our loans and look at our details. We also can look at our blueprints that we have. So if I click here, we have three blueprints. Technically, we don't need runner, Okay, so I can come over here and I can remove the runners. Okay, I can hit delete. So I can just delete, I can delete runners here. If I delete runners here, I should probably delete runners here and here. And if I do that, I probably need to go into the registry and delete the runners here and here. Okay, in fact, it's probably a pretty good idea to do that. So let's do, let's just do that real quick. So we'll hit delete. We'll come down and we'll hit delete. Click OK. And it says there is a problem. It's not safe yet. I'm going to say delete anyway. So I'm going to come over here, select those two, and hit delete. Click OK. And then I'm going to go into my init file. And I'm going, it says I don't know where this is. So I'm going to delete that blueprint and that blueprint. OK. And then that should be all the places that we've referenced uh, runners. So I'm going to come over here and refresh. Okay, refresh. It looks like it's working just fine. Calculate the details, working just fine. Now, last thing I want to do is I want to come over here and look. And it says we've done a whole bunch of cool stuff. So select them all and hit commit. Push it out. And then we can look at it actually on our GitHub and see that it's being pushed and committed, right? So I can come over here and I can go into my GitHub and I can look for my, um, the one I just did. So I can click repositories and loan amortization and I can go into my app and inside my app, I can open up templates and I can see that there is no more runner there and I can go to blueprints, no more runner there. So I know it's working I can close that. And now I can go back to my Haruku which is here, and I can look at activity. It looks like it's all been built successfully. I can click open app. I can go to loan, and I can calculate the details, and it works. And that was a lot of work this morning, but um, I think you guys should do this a couple times over the weekend and see if we can't get your for loop to work. Um, remember, we what we did is in our loan amortization, this right here is what we did in class. Uh, we talked a little bit about the for loop. When would you use a for loop? Okay, so for i in range, the, the beginning value of the for loop, the total terms it's going to run, how many times it's going to run, and it goes all the way through. So anyway, have a great weekend.